Rockets were once disposable until SpaceX revolutionized the industry with the reusable Falcon 9. But SpaceX didn't stop there. They advanced further, developing Starship, a fully reusable spacecraft, and ushering in a new era of space exploration. Recently, alongside the announcement of the Starship launch schedule, Musk personally confirmed the first complete reuse of Raptor engines in Starship Flight 7. This groundbreaking achievement represents a holy grail in rocket technology, making the reuse process more efficient than anything developed by any other company ever. So let's dive right in on these details on today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we know, during Starship's fifth flight, SpaceX achieved a remarkable recovery of the Super Heavy Booster Number 12. This milestone marked the successful retrieval of most of the booster's components, including the heat shield ring, which was recovered from the Gulf of Mexico on the 19th of October of 2024. The achievement was a huge step forward in SpaceX's efforts to create a fully reusable space system. Despite initial rumors suggesting that SpaceX had no plans to reuse components from Booster 12, Musk recently put those speculations to rest. When asked about an image of engine number 314 on X, Musk responded with a simple, Good observation. SpaceX also stated in the Flight 7 update that the Super Heavy Booster will utilize flight-proven hardware for the first time, reusing a Raptor engine from the booster launched and returned on Starship's fifth flight test. The image featured the engine with a distinctive marking, which was soon revealed to signify its intended reuse on a subsequent flight. This confirmation is a testament to the ambitious goals of SpaceX, chiefly Starship's reusability. It's amazing to think that just six flights into Starship's hardware testing, SpaceX is already reusing components. This achievement lays a solid foundation for the company's broader vision of full reusability. It shows that SpaceX's iterative approach to development is working, and the company is steadily making progress toward its long-term goals. But there's even more to look forward to. Starship Flight 7 will feature a new generation upper stage spacecraft, along with SpaceX's second attempt at catching the super heavy booster using the launch tower. This flight will be a pivotal moment in Starship's development as the company strives to perfect the landing system that could dramatically reduce costs and turnaround times for future missions. SpaceX has already secured FAA approval for Starship Flight 7 and an official launch date has been set for the 10th of January. This timing is crucial as it aligns with NASA's request to calibrate its equipment in U.S. airspace before it is deployed to Australia to capture images of Starship's upper stage during atmospheric re-entry. Get ready for this spectacular performance, and don't forget to keep an eye on those Raptor engines, particularly Raptor 314, which will be making its return. Do you think it'll complete its mission successfully? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. As exciting as the reuse of Raptor engines is, many questions remain regarding SpaceX's decision to go ahead with this plan. How might reusing engines at this stage impact the efficiency and strategy of the Starship program? With Raptor V3 engines under development and expected to deliver significant advancements, is it truly necessary for SpaceX to continue investing in the reuse of Raptor V2 engines? To address these questions, it's clear that V2 is not the final iteration of the program. SpaceX has been transparent about the fact that the Starship system will evolve over time. However, the strategy of conducting repeated test flights with prototype vehicles has proven to be highly effective. Each flight provides invaluable data that SpaceX uses to refine its designs and improve subsequent launches. Therefore, if SpaceX is quietly reusing Raptor V2 engines, it's likely a temporary decision based on practical needs. This reuse strategy makes sense given that the company still has much to learn and perfect in the development of Starship. Reusing these engines allows SpaceX to minimize costs while also ensuring that its vehicles remain operational and reliable. 
Meanwhile, the development of Raptor V3 remains a work in progress. The clearest evidence of this is Ship 33, which is still equipped with Raptor V2 engines, showing that V3 has not yet reached the maturity required for deployment. The transition from Raptor V2 to V3 will require extensive testing and optimization to ensure the new engines can meet the rigorous demands of future Starship missions. Strategically, continuing to use Raptor V2 engines is optimal for SpaceX. It minimizes risks during the technological transition and ensures system stability while developing the next-gen Raptor engine. Reusing V2 engines offers short-term economic benefits, optimizing costs and maintaining operational readiness as V3 is developed. This approach balances economic efficiency with long-term goals, allowing SpaceX to progress without sacrificing reliability. And technically speaking, Raptor V2 has proven reliable. No major issues were reported during the last two Starship test launches, and it successfully demonstrated its vacuum restart capability during Flight 6, a crucial milestone for future deep space missions. This follows a challenging moment in March when a restart attempt during Starship's third launch was aborted after the rocket lost control. Since then, Raptor V2 has become a stable and dependable engine, serving as a foundation for Raptor V3 development. As SpaceX moves toward human missions to Mars and beyond, Raptor V2 remains critical to Starship's development. It ensures dependable flights while Raptor V3 undergoes testing, directly informing the next generation of engines for interplanetary travel. All in all, the reuse of V2 is a strategic decision that supports the ongoing success of the Starship program. By refining these engines, SpaceX is paving the way for future space exploration, advancing towards full reusability with each launch. Currently, the Raptor engine stands as one of the most impressive rocket engines in the world, a true marvel of engineering innovation. The Raptor's design is revolutionary, combining advanced elements seen in only a few previous rocket engines. Its architecture refines earlier concepts placing SpaceX at the forefront of rocket propulsion. To understand the Raptor's innovation, we must examine its design and the history of rocket engine technology. Historically, two engines featured similar designs, the Soviet RD-270 and Aerojet Rocketdyne's Integrated Powerhead Demonstration Project. Despite their promise, neither engine flew. In contrast, the Raptor is the first to successfully propel a rocket into the sky, doing so in April of 2019 during its test flights. What sets the Raptor apart is its dual pre-burner system. Unlike traditional engines with a single pre-burner, the Raptor has one for oxidizer and one for fuel. In modern engines, fuel and oxidizer are sent to the pre-burner where a chemical reaction powers a turbine, which then drives the pumps that push more fuel and oxidizer into the combustion chamber. This results in the generation of thrust that propels the rocket. The Raptor's full-flow staged combustion engine is considered the pinnacle of rocket engine design. This setup optimizes liquid propellant use, en enhancing engine performance. But in order to wrap your head around this, one must look at how rocket engine technology evolved. Famous rockets like the Soyuz, Saturn V, and Delta IV use open-cycled engines. While successful, open-cycle designs had a major flaw. The pre-burner's fuel-to-oxidizer ratio couldn't match that of the engine's main combustion. The resulting exhaust would be too hot for the turbine, risking damage. To address this, engineers used a fuel-rich mixture, but this led to incomplete combustion, especially with carbon-based fuels. The result was having an exhaust that was sooty and couldn't be recirculated, creating waste. And this waste, visible as black plumes of smoke, was inefficient. Soviet engineers responded with an oxidizer-rich pre-burner, introducing all of the oxidizer and some fuel. The cleaner exhaust was then sent to the combustion chamber where it mixed with liquid fuel. This design became the basis for the RD-180 engine used in the Atlas V rocket. In the US, engineers stuck with a fuel-rich mixture but used hydrogen instead of kerosene, or RP-1. Hydrogen, being less dense, required a larger pump to deliver the right amount of fuel. While this reduced some inefficiencies, it remained suboptimal. The Raptor combines the best aspects of both approaches. With its oxidizer-rich and fuel-rich pre-burners, it minimizes waste and maximizes propellant efficiency. This full-flow staged combustion engine is a first in the industry, giving the Raptor unmatched performance.
The Raptor's design also incorporates innovations in materials science. For the oxidizer-rich preburner, SpaceX developed the SX500 Super Alloy. This blend of copper, aluminum, and steel is engineered to withstand extreme heat and pressure. Capable of withstanding up to 12,000 PSI, it endures the intense heat of oxygen-rich gases flowing through the engine's core, making it a crucial component of the Raptor's advanced design. SpaceX is embracing new manufacturing techniques that prioritize simplicity and cost-effectiveness. Under Musk's leadership, the company aims to reduce its reliance on threaded fasteners, which can be vulnerable to pressure, temperature fluctuations, and vibrations. They are instead focusing on welding interfaces, offering a stronger, more streamlined design that enhances durability and reduces complexity. While much of the Raptor engine is welded, some components are still 3D printed. Although 3D printing is a modern technology, Musk seeks to minimize its use, mainly for parts produced in large quantities. While it offers precision and customization, it also limits scalability and slows production rates. With a focus on reducing production costs and speeding up manufacturing, SpaceX uses 3D printing sparingly. SpaceX's ultimate goal for the Raptor engine is to reduce the cost per ton of thrust to under $1,000. This target is central to SpaceX's strategy of reducing space travel costs, making space exploration more accessible, and supporting future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Also, the Raptor engine uses liquid methane instead of RP-1, which means that the Raptor engine avoids producing sooty exhaust. The reasoning behind this is that methane burns cleaner, producing only carbon dioxide and water as byproducts, reducing environmental impact. This cleaner burn enables more efficient fuel use, as the fuel is effectively burned twice once in the pre-burners, and again in the combustion chamber. This dual burn maximizes efficiency by ensuring minimal waste. The Raptor's combustion chamber is designed to optimize this clean burn using hot gases to improve combustion efficiency. With only one combustion chamber, the engine maximizes the use of its propellants, streamlining the process. Through these innovations, advanced materials, efficient manufacturing, and cutting-edge propulsion, SpaceX has created a rocket engine that balances cost and performance. The Raptor engine is a crucial component of the Starship program, and it will be refined further as SpaceX works toward its vision of reusable, affordable space travel. As the Starship program progresses, the Raptor engine will continue to help drive the future of space exploration, bringing Musk's ambitious goals closer to reality. That's all for today's episode. Please remember to like and subscribe in order to stay tuned for further updates, only on Alpha Tech.